begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, it's Thursday, March 11, 2021, and the gospel for today's Mass comes from St. Luke, chapter 11, verses 14 to 23. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. And when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the crowds were amazed. Some of them said, By the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. If Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. Okay, let's stop there for a moment. You understand what was going on here? Our Lord was being accused of being the devil himself, the prince of devils. That is why he is able to cast out the devil. Now, with just a little bit of common sense, what do you make out of that kind of an accusation? The devil casting out the devil. The prince of devils casting out the devil. What do you make out of that? It doesn't make sense, right, Sophia? Right? It doesn't make sense. Because it is saying that you have the power to annihilate yourself. Right? You who are supposed to be, uh, in this case, the devil himself. Okay? is annihilating himself. Okay? Because it is by the power of Beelzebub that he casts out devils. So, <laughs> he, he is eliminating himself. Well, if he is eliminating himself, then how can he be who he is? And what he is, he'll be nothing, right? Because he eliminates himself. Right? It's like saying, you know, this is the classic philosophical uh, concept of non-contradiction, the principle of non-contradiction, which uh, uh, St. Thomas says is the principle where you cannot, something cannot be and not be at the same time and in the same respect. Okay, what does that, how do you demonstrate that? For example, something that's colored white cannot be, at the same time, color blue or color black, right? White is white, black is black, blue is blue, red is red, okay? It cannot be another color at the same time and in the same respect. Uh, so in other words, Jesus could not have been the devil and the non-devil at the same time and in the same respect, okay? And carrying this out further to its real consequences, what this means is truth is truth. It cannot be a lie at the same time and in the same respect. Okay? So, this is the principle of non-contradiction. And the very people who are accusing our Lord of being contradictory because and conflicting, see, two conflicting so-called truths, being the devil and eliminating the devil, okay, cannot 
cannot be cannot be true. You cannot combine these things because truth is not compatible with a lie. A lie is a lie. A truth is a truth. There's no middle ground to this, right? No middle ground. In 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 morality, there's no such thing as gray where black and white somehow uh, mix and they're, you know, somewhere in the middle, okay? Um, but why are these Jews, scribes and Pharisees, accusing our Lord of such contradiction? Why, why are they accusing Him of such a contradiction? Because they themselves are the ones who are conflicted. They are the ones who are confused about what's really true and what's not true. They are the ones who are really uh, not sure about their own standing, about who they really are, and what truth and goodness really are. They don't understand it. They don't understand what good and evil really are. So what do they do? They project it on Jesus their own true situation of being conflicted within themselves, they project it on Jesus. And instead of admitting to themselves that they don't know the truth and that they don't understand uh, truth the way it should be understood, they project it on Jesus and make Jesus appear like the one who's conflicted. Do you understand that? And you know what? This is what all liars do. This is what all liars and all conflicted people do because they cannot accept the truth about themselves. They always blame others for their own mistakes. They project their mistakes, their own lack of moral conviction on other people. It is always other people's fault whenever they do something wrong. It is never, ever their fault. Eh? Never their fault. So the same thing is what, this is what these Jews are, you see? <laughs> this is what these Jews are doing. They're guilty of something, but they project it on others. And they get mad when you point it out to them. Eh? When you point out to them what's wrong with them, Okay? They defend themselves by getting mad and projecting that badness, that evil, that untruth on other people. Okay? They don't have the courage, the honesty, okay? the sincerity to even admit their own faults. They always have to make an excuse. They always have to defend themselves and project their own bad behavior on others instead. Okay? So, this is very bad. <laughs> this is very bad and it has to be overcome. It has to be overcome. We have to overcome these kinds of tendencies because if we cannot be consistent with truth and we cannot stand for the truth and we cannot admit the truth, well, guess what? We will be the most miserable people because, number one, nobody's going to trust us. Because they cannot trust whatever we say or do because we are so contradictory, right? We say things that we don't follow through. We express things that are actually false and are full of lies. And... Uh, <laughs> we, we cannot admit to our own faults. We cannot admit to our own uh, 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 wrongdoings. We always have to blame other people. It's always other people who's at fault, not us. It's always how you look at me that's a problem. It's not me. It's just the way you look at me. It's just the way you treat me that's a problem. So it's really you who's the problem, not me. Right? This is the kind of blindness and contradiction that liars and dishonest people actually live with. See? This is what they live with. And 
And that really is a very, very big problem. And normally, these, are, these kinds of people are very miserable. They're very miserable because the truth of the matter is they cannot even handle their own, their own conflicts, their own contradiction within them. That's why they're always angry. These kinds of people, they're always angry. They, 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 and that's, that's already an indication to you. Somebody who's always mad, somebody who can't even smile, somebody who is sarcastic when some, somebody makes a joke out of something, or somebody who, who always tries to project a good image of himself, or somebody who is always on guard about what he might say or do or comment on. Those are indications. And you can see it in their eyes. You can see it in their faces. Those are indications of people who are so conflicted within themselves because they are living a lie. Okay? There's no spontaneity in them. There's no cheerfulness, genuine cheerfulness. There is no, <laughs> no life, really, in their souls. Because they're full of conflicts. Their, their, their whole life is a lie. They've never been able to overcome it. So how do you overcome this kind of tendency? How do we overcome this? Well, our Lord gives us the answer in the same gospel reading towards the end of this. What does our Lord say? Whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. What does that mean? Whoever is not with me is against me. With me. With Jesus. Whoever is not united with Jesus. Whoever is not sharing the life of Jesus. Whoever is not intimately connected with Jesus is against Jesus. Very simple formula, right? Whoever is with me, is not with me, is against me. Okay? Why? Why with me? Why the connection with Jesus here when it comes to upholding the truth and the integrity of truth? Because Jesus himself said, I am the way the truth and the life. See? I am the way. The way to where? The way to God the Father. The way to heaven. I am the truth. He himself is the incarnation of truth. Because he is the truth giver to begin with. Right? All truth emanates from God. He is God. He is the one who has revealed the truth about God to us. He is the one who reveals the truth about how we are to go back to God. So if we abide by the truth, which is Jesus Christ, then we are following the way that he is showing us to heaven. And then if we are living up to that truth and following that way, the pathway that Jesus has opened up for us, then we are living the ideal life. Right? A life of doing the will of God. A life immersed in God. A life full of God. A life we are living to give glory to God and not just to, to aggrandize ourselves and not just to feed our pride and not just to satisfy our emotions okay? but rather we are living a life that gives glory to God but that kind of life can only be lived in union with Jesus Christ in intimacy with Jesus who is truth himself okay? so in order not to be conflicted and not to be self-contradictory, what we need to do is to live unity 
Unity is the opposite of contradiction. But unity with what? And to whom? Our Lord says, whoever is not with me is against me. So there is the cue. Unity with Jesus Christ. Unity with Jesus Christ. Intimacy with Jesus Christ. Friendship with Jesus Christ. So we have to ask ourselves this question. Okay? Especially this Lent. How united am I really with Jesus? How much of a friend is Jesus to me? Okay? Am I really a friend of Jesus or am I just a, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, an acquaintance, you know, a kind of a distant, hi, hello kind of thing. I seem to know you, right? But there's no real friendship. You know, especially in this pandemic situation when friendships are scarce to come by and, and you see your friends in just once in a while or maybe never. Well, you know what? The best friendship to cultivate right now is friendship with Jesus Christ. Friendship with Jesus Christ. And how do you make friends with Jesus? I'll give you a few recommendations. Read more about him. And where do we read more about him? Where the gospel reading every day that we do is one good way. And then we take to heart what we hear with his gospel commentaries and really take it seriously and really pray to Jesus about them. Help, ask Jesus to help you understand the message that you hear from these gospel commentaries so that you gain, little by little, gain more intimacy with Jesus and friendship with Jesus. That's one way see, of doing this. Read more about Jesus. Study more about Jesus. Spend some time with Jesus. Spend some time with Jesus. You know, the, the, the few and far between occasions that we now are given to even spend some time in a church before the tabernacle. Eh? Use it. Use it. Use it well. Pray to Jesus right there in the tabernacle waiting for you. And when we don't have that chance to, to spend a few minutes with Jesus in front of the tabernacle, well, let's, let's use everything we have around us at home to remind us of Jesus, to, to, to keep our friendship with Jesus aflame see? by greeting all of those icons we have around the house. By, by speaking to Jesus on the crucifix. You all have that. In your bedrooms. In your rosary beads. Talk to Jesus. Be intimate with Jesus. Use the human means. Around you. Yesterday we were talking about human means. Use those means. To get to know Jesus better. And let me give you. One last tip. One last tip to help you get close to Jesus. And I, in, in here, you can also see from this gospel, he says, Whoever does not gather with me scatters. Gather what does Jesus mean here? Eh? What does Jesus mean here? You know what? He also tells us in several episodes of the gospel, he also tells us, okay? Eh? Who are his gatherers? Who are those who will gather the wheat from the chaff? Who are those who will gather the produce from the weeds at the end of time? Who are those? Huh? Savvy? I cannot hear you. The angels. Yes, the angels, right? The gatherers, those who will gather the souls for the kingdom of heaven. The angels. And who is the enemy of the angels? The devils. Right? So if you want to be, if you want to avoid that contradiction, okay, the fighting of good and evil inside of you, and, uh, and you want to be more united, you want to be more integral, you want to be united to Jesus, and you know what I would recommend? You invoke his gatherers. You invoke 
the angels who will gather the children of God. Okay? Because they are the ones that, have, that Jesus, that God has assigned to each and every one of us to be our, as we pray in the, in the prayer for the guardian, to the guardian angels, our light and guard, our rule and guide. Right? What, what is that light and guard that they're doing? They are shining the light of truth for us. See? They are the ones who will enlighten us towards the truth. They are the ones who are guarding us so that we don't fall into sin. They are bodyguards. They are our bodyguards who are going to take the bullet for us. Well, let's make them do that job. Let us invoke them to fight the devil, to fight the father of lies, so that we abide by the truth. Okay? They are the ones who will straighten us up because they're the ones who are knowledgeable about the rules, right? The rules. They're the ones that uphold the rules of God, the commandments of God that we are uh, uh, supposed to follow. And they are the ones going to guide us through this way that Jesus says he is. I am the way, the truth, and the life. They, guardian angels, are going to guide us through that path, through that way to Jesus. So that's a simple, that's a simple uh, uh, um, trick, if you, if you will, a simple mechanism, a simple way to help ourselves to always abide by the truth. Invoke your guardian angels. Ask your guardian angels to help you be friends with Jesus. If it's a little tougher to imagine how to be friends with Jesus, it is simpler to be friends with your guardian angel. And that way, little by little, let your best friend, your guardian angel, lead you to Jesus. Okay? And there's another one who is more human. Okay? Because the angel is not human. Okay? There is, a, there is another person who I would recommend you be very close to. And this one is human. And because she is human, okay, then she will understand your human concerns. And who is this? Our Lady. Our Lady. Be very close to Our Lady. See? These are the easy ways. Sometimes it's harder to get directly to Jesus. Like what some of you do. Sometimes you are not comfortable in going directly to Papa to tell Papa things you want to do. What do you do? You go to your mommy. <laughs> and then later your mommy tells me what you like. Right? Well, same with Jesus. Same thing with our Lord. Same thing with God. Sometimes we need to use these intercessors. Going through Our Lady. Going through the angels. Your guardian angel. Okay? So that you get to Jesus. Okay? So to Jesus, we go through Mary and through our guardian angels. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Is Ava going to say goodbye? I don't know, but no. No. <laughs> no, don't force her. Okay, don't worry. But you say goodbye where you are. You want? Bye. I'm going to show where you are, Ava. Here. Oops. I don't know. I cannot show it. There. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Okay, folks. That's it for us. Have a good day, everybody. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.